Hey guys. First of all, hello, extra people. I was talking to them, but hello, NJHS people. If you're in this room, I am sorry you actually didn't make it. We misprinted your letter. I'm just kidding. No, you made it in. Good job. All right. Today, listen. Listen. We're going to talk about what it means now that you have passed the application process. Essentially, this is all split into a few different sections. By this, I mean NJHS. So, you have made it through the application part of this so far. That's it. Doesn't mean you are an official member of NJHS. No, it doesn't. Not yet. You have to complete the program first. That means that you have to fulfill all of the requirements. Whenever you fulfill all the requirements, then we go through the induction process at the end of your eighth grade year. And that allows you to officially become a member of NJHS as we will we'll memorialize forever and ever. So, um, your grades got you here. What you need to do is you need to maintain the grades that got you here. So that was one thing we talked to you about a couple weeks ago whenever you got the application is that you have to maintain that A minus average. That's one requirement. You have to maintain your behavior. If you are gonna represent NJHS, you are not going to act a fool in this building. Because if you do, you might be on the track for removal. So, you now are held to a higher expectation of your behavior. You need to be good children. Also, you need to, before the end of your 8th grade year, so by May of 2024, you need to have 40 service hours, community service hours. We're going to talk about what that looks like. We're going to talk about where to get those hours, how to submit them, all that fun stuff. You should have no questions by the time you leave here today about that. At the end of eighth grade, there is an induction ceremony, which is kind of set up like a graduation, where we will recognize people for their achievements, people who go above and beyond, whether it's for hours, whether it's for grades, whether it's for um, citizenship, character, anything like that. And everyone who completes their hours, maintains their grades, everything I just said, you will receive your official certificate and you will be inducted into NJHS by Dr. Thorpe. So that will happen at the end of the year next year. But for now, the question is, how do you get hours? There are several ways that you can get community service hours. The first way is you can find them on your own. So there are a bunch of different organizations out there that you can volunteer for. Um, you can volunteer at the Humane Society, you can volunteer at your church, you can volunteer. There's a lot of different places out there where you can volunteer. You could also do something for someone and not receive compensation for that. So for example, if you are babysitting, not your siblings, but if you are babysitting and you do that for free, you can enter that as hours. If during the winter time, we have 18 feet of snow and you choose to shovel someone's driveway, and you don't receive compensation for that. By compensation, I mean you don't get paid. You can count that as hours. Um, if you are at someone's house and they've gone on vacation and you are babysitting their fish, that is not a service hour. Do not submit that, I will delete it. Although we did have someone this past year who submitted service hours because they gave their llama injections. Yeah. I didn't quite understand that one either. But yeah, so that I might have to talk to that person. But you can also gain service hours by things that we send out to you. So a lot of times elementary schools will come to us whenever they have their carnivals, their fairs, all the stuff that you remember doing when you were in elementary school. They come to us for volunteers. And then you will go and volunteer at those places. And that allows you to maybe reconnect with old teachers, to reconnect with the building, Usually it's a lot of fun. We will send out all of those events via Remind. If you all take a look at your letter, there is a code for a Remind. You need to sign up for that Remind. I cannot state that any more clearly. You need to sign up for the Remind. And it asks if you want to turn on notifications. You do, because if not, you're gonna to forget to look at it and then you're gonna go, I need to know this came out. That's 100% your fault. Turn on notifications. You're responsible for knowing when messages are sent to you. So you'll need to download the app, you can put it on your phone, your iPad, multiple places. 
So anytime we have something to send to you, whether that is a, an opportunity for service hours, whether that is just a general announcement about something else, that is how we will communicate to you. So if you are not on the remind, that means we cannot communicate to you. That means there's gonna be a lot of people who know what's going on and there's gonna be you. Don't be that person, okay? Know what's going on, sign up for the remind. If you wanna have your parents sign up for the remind as well, that's fine. But the cap on the remind is 150 people. There are currently about 100 of you. So maybe only have one parent sign up. Or maybe none because you should be able to take care of your own stuff within JHS. Remember, you are the one who is in JHS, not your parents. If you have an issue with something, I expect to hear from you. Do not have your parents contact us. Because if they do, there's a good chance I'm going to say, have your child contact me. You are the one in NJHS, you attend FJH, your parents do not. So NJHS is your responsibility. Make sure you remember that. Um, so we will send out different opportunities via Remind. You're gonna get a sheet that tells you all this information anyway, but here is how the hour breakdown works. By the end of your seventh grade year, so by May 26th, you need to have a grand total of 10 service hours so far, including at least one event that we send out on Remind. So by the time you in seventh grade, by the time you walk out of their rooms on the last day, you need to have 10 hours with at least one of those hours coming from an event that we send out. Now the other nine hours, if you want to get it doing other events that you go and find, that's fine. But you need at least one event that we send out to you. In eighth grade, for the first semester of eighth grade, so starting in August through December, you need 12 hours plus one in JHS event. For the next semester, you need 12 plus one event. For those of you who are really, really good at math, that does not add up to 40. The additional six hours you need to go find on your own and you need to add that to your total. So what we're telling you is the requirements for each semester are for the first one 10, for first semester of eighth grade 12, for second semester of eighth grade 12. So keep that in mind as you're going to get hours. You need to keep track of the hours you are getting. If you are freaking out right now about this, guys, I promise you it is not as hard as it seems. We've, had, we've done NJHS now for, I mean, Roviak and Sturgeon have done it for like a thousand years. But ever since I've done it, we've had very, very few people who have ever not gotten in because of service hours. As long as you're staying on top of it and you don't wait until April 29th of 2024 to start your hours, I think you'll be okay. That won't be the case anyway. Um, oh, let's see, what else about hours? You will submit your hours digitally. I will show you all of that a little bit later on. But you will submit all of your hours by going to the NJHS website for Fishers Junior High. There are some links there for you to submit your hours. And it's a pretty easy Microsoft form where you'll just describe um, what the event was, the day that you did it, and how many hours that you completed. And then you submit that, and I will have those hours to count towards your 40. So I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later on, but that's what hours look like. What happens if you don't maintain these expectations that we have set for you? Well, here's what that looks like. First of all, we check grades every quarter. Every quarter, so at the end of third nine weeks, for the current eighth graders, we're gonna check their grades. For you guys, we'll wait until the end of the school year. Every grade or every grading period, we go and check to make sure everyone is still maintaining that A minus average. If you find yourself falling below that A minus average, first of all, take a deep breath because it's okay. What happens at that point? You're placed on what's called academic probation. And then you will meet with a member of the faculty council, which includes people like Roviak, Sturgeon, um, Mr. Baker's on there, Mrs. Kletch is on there, a few other teachers as well. You may meet with one of them, and basically they're going to talk with you about what some of your goals are to get that grade back up. And what that means is if it comes around to the next quarter and you don't meet that grade requirement, then you're excused from NJHS. We don't want to do that. We've had, we've had to do that before. It's not something that Mrs. Alexander and I enjoy doing. So don't put us in that position. If you find yourself struggling with grades, please ask for help. 
Whether you ask one of us or ask your teachers, that's a better choice. Please ask for help. Do not let yourself struggle. Um, service hours. So let's say at the end of this school year, you only have three hours because you forgot that you were in JHS. <laughs> we left. That has happened. First of all, don't forget you're in JHS. Second of all, if you do not complete your hours, basically the same thing happens. You're basically put probation. And then if you don't meet that requirement again, you will be excused from NJHS. So it's a pretty simple process. Probation is a big scary word, but basically it only means, hey, watch it. You're in this position where things could be bad for you. So that's what happens if we don't meet those expectations. Um, honestly, not as scary as it sounds. Although Mrs. Alexander is terrifying. If you don't meet those requirements, she will frown at you and you will feel horrible. It's bad. I've seen it. She's done it to me and I feel horrible. All right, the fun part. Guys, next Friday, next Friday, you will participate in one of the best nights of junior high that you will have. It is called, and I did not come up with this name, so don't yell at me, Super Happy Fun Night. During Super Happy Fun Night, basically after school, next Friday, you will all meet in here, and there's a whole set of permission slips and all that kind of stuff we'll get to in a second. You will meet in here, and from about 4 to 10.45 p.m., this used to be an overnight, so they used to have to sleep here. We don't sleep here anymore, because that's gross. <laughs> yeah, we don't recommend that. It's on the floor, it hurt. Yeah. Kids love it. Yeah, no. Go home. Yeah, the adults want to go home. Tired. Basically, that night, you will participate in a lot of activities that are meant to test your leadership and to also test your ability to work as a team. Some of the activities will confuse you. Some of the activities will frustrate you. Some of the activities you will never forget. That takes place next Friday at the end of that evening. Based on how everyone has performed in those various activities, you will elect your officers. You will elect the people who you are choosing to represent you as in JHS. Those people will have a few more responsibilities to go along with their position. For example, right now, our NJHS officers for the eighth graders are working on a Riley Dance Marathon project. So they're trying to kind of put that together and host that, communicate with the high school. And they're also responsible for helping out at Super Happy Fun Night next year. So next Friday, the eighth grade officers will be here helping us out. So they have a few more responsibilities than just your average member of NJHS. And they take on that responsibility and they seek out that responsibility. That's the kind of person that you want to elect as an officer. And we'll go through all that in a little bit more detail. Um, you don't have to be here for that event. I don't know why you would ever miss that event. If I were you, I would rearrange my schedule right now to make sure that you are free on Friday night. But you do not have to be here. However, if you want to be an officer, you have to be here. If you are here, you cannot have an officer position. So if that's something that interests you, you need to make sure you are here next Friday. Typically, everybody's here. Yes. It is not one of those who are like, oh yeah, some of us will show up. Typically, everybody's here. We know some people can't make it. Some of you will get sick. Don't come. Don't infect us. Some of you may have something going on. I know there's some sitting here right now, but I have practice after school on Friday. Yep, go to practice, then come here. You can come and you can leave early if you need to, except as Mr. Henderson said, at the end of the night is when we do officers. So leaving early means you don't vote for your officers and you don't get to be an officer and you'll miss some of the activities. If you have to get here late, you'll miss some of the beginning things, but at least you're here. So most people are here for the entire time, but if there is something going on, you have to be here for part of the night, that is, that is allowed. But just know, pretty much everybody sitting in front of you will be here that night. And guys, I cannot reiterate enough how fun it is. This is one of the highlights every single year, every chapter of NJHS that you talk to, they will say that probably their favorite thing that they did was Super Happy Fun Night. So if you have any way of being here next Friday, you need to be here. It is extremely fun. Yeah, we, all, we also uh, backload events, which means because we know there's sports after school, wrestling, basketball, stuff like that, that Aggressive we, cuddling. wrestling, 
We do uh, more of the more fun activities later in the evening. And so we try to do, there's bonding activities we start with, and then as it goes along, we try to increase the fun and activity until we eventually culminate in the giant voting things. You will be tired at the end of the night. You will want to go to sleep. You can't, if I can't take a nap, neither can you. So you cannot go to sleep until I get to go to sleep. That night, we will have pizza. From where? We aren't sure yet. But if you need a gluten-free option, please come talk to Mrs. Alexander at the end of this whole thing so we can make sure that you don't break out in celiac disease and just, just fall over dead. We don't want that. Looks very bad on our reports. Um, anything else for me after Super Happy Fun Night that I have neglected to say? Uh, it earned its title for a good reason. You will be moving a lot. Oh, yes. So you will want shoes that you can wear that will not fall off your feet if you're moving quickly. So Crocs, not really the best option to oh, wear that time. Yeah. Okay, things that lace up, not flip flops, not high heels. Not your slippers. that you can crawl around on the ground for and run in. You don't know, rev up on a formal event. Um, they're going to be passing out a paper to you that gives some information about that night. Um, there's a couple things you have to bring for that night. There's going to be an item that you have to bring that reflects you, that comes from your home, that is preferably from your room. And understand that other Listen. people will be handling this item. So if you are worried about it breaking, don't pick that item. Okay, but you should also try to bring something that you don't think other people will be bringing. So you will use it. Why are we talking? All right, here's what you are getting. You are getting two pieces of paper. One of them is actually two forms. The form that is the one form with all the words on it. That is what we call the consent and understanding form. That has a spot at the bottom for you to sign and for your parents to sign. Make sure you read through that before you sign it. Do not get in the habit of signing things without reading them. Trust me, that's really bad to do as an adult. Whenever you read through that, that is basically your contract for NJHS. Those are all of the requirements that will be required of you. If you agree to those requirements, which clearly you do because you filled out the application knowing what was expected, if you agree, sign it, have your parents sign it, and that is what you will return to Mrs. Alexander. Mrs. Alexander, raise your hand. You can find her in the library. She's anywhere and everywhere in the library. The other sheet. There are two separate items on there. The first item on there has you select your t-shirt size. Because there is an NJHS t-shirt. It is what I'm wearing, except it's red. This is actually a mistake that I like to wear and, and give Mr. Modulin crap about because he ordered the wrong color. So yours will be red, but this is what yours will look like. Mr. Brobiak is currently sporting the older model, which makes sense. So, Mr. Alexander forgot it. That was rude. Listen, you are not talking because I am talking. Also, on there are what are called chapter dues. Guys, this is not something that we can do for free. There is a national membership that we have to pay dues to every year to be a part of NJHS. It allows for a few more extra opportunities for you, the student. So sometimes there are scholarships on there that we'll send out to you. If you create an account with them, you can for free sign up to possibly get a scholarship. So um, also for induction, there is money that we have to spend for awards. There's money that we have to spend for um, products to make certificates. So that money that you are paying, that $30, is not just going in our pockets. Trust me. I see not a dime of that. Um, the other sheet on there, first of all, that is something that you will fill out and then you see at, in the middle where it says cut here. You will take these really, you will take these really nifty things right here. These are called scissors. You take the paper and then you can actually cut through it. I know! So you will detach the top part of that and you will return that along with your $30 to Mr. Broviak. Mr. Broviak, raise your hand. You can find him in the crazy wing of the building next to Mr. Baker and Mrs. Butts and all those people. The last form on there 
is your permission slip for Super Happy Fun Night. You will get your parent to sign that, as well as check one of those options for you. You will also attach $5 in cash for dinner, so we can pay for pizza, because it also costs money to feed you. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. You will return that slip, along with your $5, to me. I'm Mr. Henderson. I'm right outside the library, right next to Mrs. Rao and Mrs. Frush. My name is above my door. What do you need? Oh, come on, pass routers. I did not put the wrong form anywhere. I'm always right. People, here's what I don't want you to do. I do not want you to walk up to a single one of us and hand us all three of these things. Because it means you are clearly not listening right now. To be fair, or to be clear, this form right here, you are going to cut into the top portion, goes to Mr. Broviak, the bottom portion comes to me. You should put that on the form. Yeah. I should? Oh, look at that, I did. And you know how many times it still doesn't happen? The I get the cash, I'm keeping it. That means you don't eat. The other form on there, that Gus has in his hands that I'm gonna borrow right now. The consent and understanding form. This, people at home, this one. This goes to Mrs. Alexander. This is your NJHS contract. So make sure you get that signed as well. What am I missing? Um, also notice, on, oh, maybe you said this when I was handing stuff out, what you are bringing to the overnight, food. Okay, so we will we will order the pizza, but if your last name is A through H, you're bringing two liter of something to drink, I through O, a bag of chips, some kind of snacky, crunchy thing, and then salty-ish kind of thing, and then P through Z is the dessert. Not a cake that you've made, Baked. We're talking like a bag of cookies or something like that. These are things to share. We will set them all out. People will go and get what they want of them. You don't need to bring cookies for wall 85 of you. Okay? But the goal is that we are not using silverware. Okay? It is chips and cookies and finger foods like pizza. That's what we're going to do. All right? We will have ice and cups and plates and all that kind of good stuff for you, but you bring one of those to share. When you bring it, bring it that day. Keep it in your locker, okay? You shouldn't have something gigantic that doesn't fit there. If for some reason your locker is a disaster, you probably won't be in NJHS very long, but if it is a disaster and it can't fit, then you have to come to somebody and go, my locker is a disaster. Where can I store my chips, my dessert, and my two liter? Find the person that you think is most likely going to keep that for you until the end of the day. And then you have to go get it at the end of the day. We're not going to take it down for you. If you have gluten, uh, if you have to eat gluten free, again, you need to come see me before you leave this cafeteria today. Today is my count for gluten free pizzas. I know they're not good. <laughs> or if. I mean, if, I'll be sitting there choking it down with a dry crust and, yeah, with you. But you can also know. bring your own food if that's going to be an issue because I've also tried to eat gluten free pizza and it makes me want to cry. I usually if do. you don't like pizza. Or if you don't like pizza, that too. Do not forget about your item that you are bringing. Make sure, once again, that item is not breakable. Other people are going to be handling that item. It should be unique, and it should represent you. If you have questions, come see one of us in the next week to ask said question. Bye, home people.